So we'll switch gears now and go to college football. A lot of things happening this weekend, a lot of tough matchups, uh, a lot of big storylines coming out of it. Vince, what was your biggest storyline that came out of this weekend? Mine was Pitt winning against UConn because typically in past years, we don't win these games. We lost last year to Rutgers at home. We lost a couple years ago to Navy at home, both in games that we were supposed to win. We were supposed to win this game. We had many opportunities. We had three times where we had the ball in the red zone and only came away with two field goals. Uh, one had to do with Bill Stahl throwing a taint uh, that went the other way for six points. And uh, a couple of the other times we just couldn't get the ball in the end zone. When you have the third leading rusher in the country, when you have the country's leading touchdown catching receiver, Doran Dickerson, you have to score in the red zone. You have two six five wide receivers. You have to score in the red zone. Uh, but Pitt did surprise me by winning this game, but we have to be better in the red zone if we're going to continue to win like this. Without a doubt, Pitt was very, very, very partway lucky and partway effective. Can't quite put together a full 60 minutes of football yet, but they win, and a lot of people saw this game as, all right, Connecticut and Pitt, which one is the pretender and which one is the contender? Pitt comes out the contender now, and they're going to vie for a Big East title against Cincinnati. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. To me, it's without a doubt the Florida defense. I mean, the way they were able to control the LSU offense, hold them only to three points, and that was a field goal that was an 18-yarder. So that means that they stopped them on the goal line, not allowing them to get into the end zone. Tim Tebow struggled a little bit. You know, say what you want, whether it was the concussion or whether it was LSU uh, playing tough D or playing at LSU. But Tim Tebow needed help, and the defense stepped up, holding uh, they held LSU to 162 total yards, 66 rushing yards at 2.2 yards per carry. No offense is going to be able to move the ball based on that. Only one for nine uh, on third downs. But when you look at, obviously, when you look at the Florida team, everybody always focuses on Tim Tebow and what a great player he is, which I'm not debating that whatsoever. But this Florida defense, which not only returned all 11 starters from last year, they returned all 11 backups from last year. You want to talk about consistency, Urban Meyer always wins the big games. His defense down there is absolutely outstanding, and I don't see how they can be beat uh, for the rest of the year just because of how good the defense is, yeah. regardless of what the offense does. Yeah, I, I believe I mentioned the Florida defense last week. I don't know if we covered that, but uh, yeah, Florida won that game. I expected them to win. I don't expect them to lose it all this year. So It's hard to argue with that, but now we're going to look from, the past, from this past weekend, now up to the upcoming weekend as the Red River Shootout uh, between Texas and Oklahoma is going to be happening Saturday at 3.30, I believe, or maybe 12, one or the other. Uh, but this year's matchup is a lot different than last year's matchup. Last year, major BCS implications, obviously still the matchup between Bradford and McCoy, but this year, does it have a different feel? Did it lose some of the hype? Uh, well, it's different because Oklahoma doesn't have the weapons that they usually have. They don't have the weapons they had last year. No, no Jermaine Gresham. Uh, maybe they won't have Ryan Broyles. We don't know yet. Uh, Bradford hasn't been tested yet since he's come back from injury. Baylor's not a test. Uh, so this game is important for – it's not really important for Oklahoma because they're not going to the BCS regardless. Uh, but it's important for Texas because if they want to get to the BCS – title game, they want to guarantee themselves they want to get there. They have to run the table. They have to win all these games. We know that this is a big rivalry, and we know what happens in big rivalries sometimes. Although one team might not be as good as the other team, anything can happen. Oklahoma can no doubt win this game. Uh, but this is also important for Texas because if they don't win this game, they have so many other teams that they have to contend with to get to the BCS title game. You could have either a one-loss Florida or Alabama team, a one-loss USC or Oregon team, uh, an unbeaten Cincinnati team, an unbeaten Boise team, unbeaten TCU, possibly unbeaten Iowa, or worst-case scenario, a one-loss Penn State or Ohio State team vying for that uh, spot in the title game against either Florida or Alabama. And, and without question, you know, I agree with you, and, and, and the hype around this game is not nearly as high as it was last year, but I think that this game, without question, is much, much bigger for Texas, not only because of the reasons that Vince mentioned, but this week in the polls, they were jumped. It was Florida, Texas, 1-2 and two for, for a majority of this season so far. Alabama with an impressive win against Mississippi this past weekend leapfrogs them into the number two slot, which obviously puts right now the Florida and Alabama there. Now, they're probably going to they're gonna end up playing uh, by the end of the year, I'm convinced of it. Uh, if it's not already on the schedule, I don't know if they're if they're on the schedule this year or if it's going to end up being yeah, in the, it would, it would be in the SEC, SEC championship. Game. So 
They'll, they'll probably end up playing the SEC championship game. One's going to get knocked out. But Texas really, really needs to step up in this game and show that they can win games they're supposed to. Oklahoma already with two losses. You really can't expect uh, them to BCS bus this year. So it's really, really important for Texas. But, but beyond that, one of the reasons why the hype is lost is – this is not the marquee matchup. You know, last year it was a matchup of top five teams, and without question, the entire nation was watching. It was last year. Last year's game was equivalent to this past weekend's Florida LSU, and how marquee and how big it was uh, for everybody to watch. When you look at it this year, look at the games on the slate: number eight Cincinnati at number twenty-one USF, number twenty-two South Carolina at number two Alabama, number four Virginia Tech at number nineteen Georgia Tech. And, you know, another big game, which obviously is going to have a lot of following. Number six, USC uh, at number 25, Notre Dame, where Charlie Weiss is going to finally try and get that staple win he's been looking for since he came, uh, came aboard there. But when you look at those slated games, you know, I, I see at least two, possibly three games that I'd want to see, if not all of them, that I'd rather see than Oklahoma-Texas. Uh, I think it's going to be a great game without question, Oklahoma and Texas, that is. But I, I just don't see the hype there as, as I've seen in past years. Yeah, there's definitely not the hype this year uh, that there was last year because last year there was the whole the backdrop of the Heisman competition between uh, McCoy and Bradford and of course Tebow. Uh, but this, this year that's not there because mm -hmm. it looks like it's going to be Tebow. Cole McCoy does still have a chance, but Bradford's pretty much out of it unless you know he throws like 40 touchdowns in his last six games, which isn't going to happen. Uh, so. Uh, that's why this game doesn't have the hype. It's also not you know, a top five matchup, which it was last year, so that's why. But it will be interesting to see what happens in the Big 12 if Oklahoma was to pull the upset, because then Texas drops to a one-loss team, Oklahoma still two-loss. The Nebraska-Missouri game from last Thursday night, which was an absolutely outstanding game, Nebraska comes back, gets a big win over Missouri uh, in the fourth quarter. It'll be interesting to see how that shakes up uh, the Big 12 and how things get affected by that. Uh, you know, and basically it would drop every Big 12 team out of contention for the national championship. But uh, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, unless Kansas were to go unbeaten and beat a one-loss Texas team, they might have a chance. There's another team right there that could be in it. Uh, so I guess we'll see. So it's almost, it's almost like this has more implications for the Big 12 than it does for the national championship picture, yeah. uh, which I think is a great thing, though. But uh, that's something we'll leave till next time to discuss. As always, for Vince Rodder, I'm Josh Sickles. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next week for another edition of 543.